Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Mike Logan from Logan Counseling and AskMikeTheCounselor2.com, two of my online properties uh, that have very close to my heart. I've been uh, a counselor for since 1996, professionally involved in personal growth work since about 1980, utilizing a lot of different modalities. And as time passes, I get more and more excited. Uh, technology has taken us into some pretty interesting places recently inside the human brain using things like SPECT scans. Dr. Daniel Amen is using those a lot in functional magnetic resonance imaging, which is a way to look at blood flow in the brain. And uh, about two years ago, I read a book called The Brain That Changes Itself. In fact, my little tripod for my my webcam is sitting on it right now, and that was a game changer for me. Uh, it's written by Norman Doidge, and uh, it talks about neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. Uh, this is a 62-year-old brain. It's got some bumps and some bruises. Uh, it's well-worn, uh, as my children would. Okay, if they were here, they would certainly be going, nodding in agreement. Okay, because um, this brain doesn't know how to do video games very well. I'm still a Pong kind of guy. Uh, I have websites, but I don't do cell phones very well. But at any rate, neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. Um, I can grow new brain cells every day. Not I can, I do. Uh, those brain, those new neurons uh, are available if I make sure that I'm taking care of my brain's fitness. Yeah, you can work out your brain. And the name of this video is going to be neuroplasticity, by the way. Neuroplasticity exercises. Okay, so if you can imagine your brain doing some curls, uh, in a sense, that's what we're asking you to do. Those new brain cells can migrate to parts of the brain like the hippocampus, and they can be incorporated. Hippocampus is very important for memory, by the way, if you're an older person. And uh, you can uh, encourage your brain to produce a maximum amount of new neurons every day, and keep some replacement parts parts flowing into the brain. That helps build what is called cognitive reserve. Okay, if you live to pay to age 85, half of the people alive at 85 are going to be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and the other half of those people are going to have tangles and plaques in their brain that are associated with with Alzheimer's. But because they have built up a cognitive reserve, which is the term used to describe uh, a lot of extra connections, the brain will be able to reroute signals around the tangles and the plaques. And you won't lose your effectiveness or your efficiency in the external world. You'll still be able to rem remember the grandchildren's names and maybe even torment them a little bit. Take a teddy bear away or something. Okay, that kind of thing will still be available to you. Okay, so neuroplasticity is the term used to describe how neurons connect when they learn something new. So that can happen with, within minutes, according to Simon Evans and Paul Berger, the authors of a, a book called Brain Fit for Life. And you can find a link, a number of links on Logan Counseling or Ask Mike the Counselor, too, to that book. They've written the book uh, for the layman. They've called the research and brought together a lot of extra tips or a lot of tips about what we can do to make sure our brain builds a cognitive reserve, the neuroplasticity is strong, uh, the neurogenesis is effective, and so we have a brain that's growing well into uh, deep into our senior years, if not all the way out to the end. Okay, neuroplasticity is that term that's used to describe connections between neurons. When I learn something new, those connections can happen within minutes. Okay, but I need to rehearse them, practice them again for the connection to stay viable, for the circuit to stay viable. So the brain is 2% uh, of our body weight. It uses 20% of the fuel that we use a day. There's a lot of chemical reactions. Out of those chemical reactions, something called free radicals happen, and those are what causes aging. Okay, so your brain is very aware of that. It, 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 if circuits and new connections aren't reinforced, the brain will delete them. It will dismantle them in order to save fuel and to minimize free radical damage. So if you think that your retirement is going to be to the couch to watch daytime TV, 
the brain will dismantle itself pretty quickly. You don't want to do that. You need to involve yourself in uh, the pillars of brain fitness, uh, which are physical exercise, nutrition, including omega-3s and antioxidants, um, good sleep, stress management, too much adrenaline and cortisol, or environmental toxins, or alcohol, or THC, whatever. Th those things kill the new neurons. Okay, so recreational chemicals and packaged foods are something to be very wary of in terms of neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. Okay, stress management and the last pillar of brain fitness is novel learning experience, and that is the kind of learning that's involved in when we take up a new instrument, when we learn a new language. Uh, there is an increasing level of challenge and you have to practice regularly. Now for neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, you do not have to become a master of a new language or a new instrument. You simply have to practice it and be working towards an increased level of challenge. So if you're a Sudoku fan and you're working on the same level of Sudoku, more Sudoku won't do it for neuroplasticity. You need to do something different. Okay, so for more information about uh, neuroplasticity exercises, see logancounseling.com or askmikethecounselor2.com. Uh, there will be a link to Logan Counseling in this video, and I thank you for your time. Bye-bye.